Hello, welcome to the Friday, December 16th, 2016 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Washington, D.C. I think it was about a week ago I wrote about the malicious email attachments I received from Domain Cop. Today, Pratt analyzed one of these emails in depth. He ended up with the Kerber ransomware after looking at the attachment in more detail. He also discovered the two additional domains that were related to this particular wave of attacks. In addition to domaincop.org, he saw domaincop 247.com as well as ccnotice.net. I'm not sure how successful this particular attack was, but I guess if we see some similar domains being registered in the future, it probably means that it worked for them. Well, and if you need more reasons to apply Apple's patches for OS 10, here's one. It turns out that the patches released earlier this week do fix a vulnerability that allows access access to the FileVault password via Thunderbolt. Now, first of all, FileVault, like all disk encryption, is supposed to protect a system if an attacker has physical access to the system. And this is exactly what is required in order to break the FileVault to password using access to Thunderbolt. What's happening is that if an OS 10 system reboots, it does allow for a short time access via Thunderbolt to memory via DMA. And as a result, an attacker can read the file vault password before it is being deleted during the reboot process. This particular attack, of course, requires special hardware in order to access the Thunderbolt port, but that's pretty straightforward to acquire. And it has been tested with multiple Thunderbolt 2 laptops, has not been tested yet with the newer USB-C laptops, but uh, there is really no reason why it shouldn't work with those laptops. So Apple patched the problem and this time window during which you can access memory no longer exists. It was also possible actually to write memory during that time so an attacker could inject malicious code as well. And then we got another virtual machine escape vulnerability that has been addressed in QEMU and Xen. Again, the Xen uh, virtualization is based on QEMU, so as a result, shares some of the same vulnerabilities. The exploitability depends a little bit on which hardware you're using in your virtual machine. 64-bit is less likely affected than 32-bit. However, if you're using, for example, QEMU Xen traditional you're vulnerable even if you're using the 64-bit virtual hardware. I'll link to the original advisory with a vulnerability matrix so you can double check if your configuration is vulnerable or not, but probably best to apply the patch. And it looks like DNS changers are back. Haven't really heard much of them this year, they were big in 2015, but uh, Proofpoint is now saying that they have seen malicious advertisements that are using this malware. Now, DNS changers are interesting in so far as, well, they don't really contain much malware. Instead, they're using cross-site request forging to change a home router's DNS settings. And by doing so, they will then redirect machines on them that particular network to adware, malware, and more exploits. In the past, there were something like 50 or so different exploits that were used by these DNS changers. This latest version found by Proofpoint uses 166 different fingerprints that are then used against these routers. So essentially, the victim is being exposed to the malicious advertisement, then WebRTC or STAN is being used in the browser with JavaScript in order to figure out the internal addressing scheme. And then cross-site request forging is used to change DNS settings. The attack either exploits vulnerabilities in the router or also just tempts default passwords commonly used on the router. One tricky part here, one 
good precaution usually is to disable the remote admin interface for these routers. But in this case, the attack actually, because it's cross-site request forging, comes from a system inside the network. So you typically cannot disable access to the admin interface from inside your network, which makes uh, this attack particularly effective. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.